Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at the Dream Giveaway Garage and we have another very special vehicle that's part of a giveaway. Now, the reason why I say it's part of a giveaway is that guess what? This vehicle here, this 1970 Plymouth AA Arcuda is actually part of a two vehicle giveaway that they currently have going on. So I don't know if you remember, or maybe you haven't seen it. I'll put the link at the end of this video, that 2019 Power Wagon it's part of a show and tow giveaway. So you're getting two for one. And with this particular vehicle, you're looking at barely 2,700 examples that have been made, but we'll get more into actual hard numbers. Let's talk a little bit about the Plymouth Cuda. So there's been three generations of the Plymouth Cuda that were produced. And remember Plymouth being part of Dodge Chrysler Plymouth organization, this third generation is different because the first two sat on the Plymouth Valiant chassis. This one actually sits on the Dodge Challenger chassis. The whole purpose of this AAR Cuda was to go racing in what was basically the golden age of the SCCA, Sports Car Club of America Trans Am series. So there was a specific purpose for building this car and one very famous American racer by the name of Dan Gurney campaigned these cars very successfully to go up against the other big three brand and vehicles that they brought to the racetrack. With this AAR Cuda, you're gonna get some power, you're also gonna get some handling and definitely a unique look that sets it apart from the rest of the muscle car scene. So let's go ahead dive into this Plymouth AAR Cuda, see what makes it special, and see why really that third generation of the Cuda is what everybody loves. Right off the bat, I love the styling. You could clearly see the connection between the Cuda and the Challenger, and there is discussion about Dodge today bringing back the Cuda name. So I'm kind of excited to see by looking at this one, will that spark some of that flame and would it be something to look forward to? But very, very unique muscle car styling, that low, wide look. 1970 was really the peak of the muscle car era. Deep within the inset grill here, you could see the Plymouth badge, the classic muscle car round headlights. Of course, you're gonna have hood pins that's gonna keep that hood secure. And that came like that from the factory. Now, as we come across the front area, just massive and I think really you see that connection to the Challenger, even the new Challengers of today. You have your lower fog lamps, nice open air intake, and of course, lurking behind this chrome bumper and beautiful flat black front fascia is gonna be that V8, which we're gonna get to that in a second, but very sinister from the front. When we get up onto the hood, of course, you're gonna have a functional hood scoop. You could actually see the air cleaner from outside of the hood with it being closed like that. And that's all gonna channel air, but I don't know if you've been paying attention to the chargers and the challengers that are being produced today. You could see that style. It almost looks like the hood off of the scat pack charger. Very, very similar to what's going on or the challenger from today. Now, as we come around the bend, classic styling. You have this rally red color, and these are the specific uh, stripe kit for the AAR. The way the rules stated is that you had to build at least 2,500 of these to race it in the SCCA Trans Am series. And you had your Boss 302s, your Camaro Z28s, all that muscle car power on a road course. And the late 60s going into 1970 was the height, the golden era of the Trans Am series. But wheel and tire setup, you're looking at a 15 inch steel wheel. I like the nice chrome trim ring. The way the car sits, is absolutely spot on the money. Now, one of the reasons why it's sitting like that is that there have been a few things that have been done to this particular vehicle. So it's sitting on Rytec coilover shocks and out back you have a torque arm rear suspension. That's gonna help us not only handle better, but just look at the way it sits. It has that perfect muscle car stance to it. Now, when we go down the hood here, nice long hood, I like the venting in the back portion of it. And of course that flat black with the rally red really just sets it apart. 
Another styling cue that was very, very popular during the muscle car days is the vinyl roof. So this one has the full vinyl roof. Look at how small those side mirrors are. Really almost like uh, an afterthought uh, so not to disrupt the beautiful lines of this CUDA. No AAR CUDA is complete without its side exiting exhaust. It comes out on an angle, nice slash cut. That's gonna give us that V8 rumble that we come to expect from a car like this. And then coming out back, you have your CUDA, your AAR. Now, if you wonder what does AAR stand for? All American Racers. That was the organization that was put together actually by Dan Gurney and Carol Shelby uh, when they first started. But Dan Gurney piloted those AAR CUDAs around the racetracks around the United States. You have a flat black trunklet spoiler, very similar, very similar to what you see on today's Challengers and Chargers. And then just really love that classic style of the horizontal slots for the brake lights and everything. And very, very clean out back, nice smooth, clean area. You're gonna have a Curry nine inch rear end that's gonna help get the traction to the ground. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see what's powering this 1970 Cuda. All right, guys, we got the hood popped on the 1970 AAR Cuda. Underneath that hood is a six pack. No, not a six pack of beer. We're talking about the 340 six pack. So that is a 340 cubic inch V8 the whole six pack reference is because it has three two barrel carburetors, also known as three deuces. This is a 5.6 liter engine. Now rated listings back then were underrated for insurance purposes. So you're looking at 290 horsepower that was listed by uh, Plymouth back in 1970, but we do know that number is higher. 345 pound feet of torque, it has a factory Edelbrock intake manifold. Out of all of the Plymouth AAR Cooters that were made back in 1970, this one, because it is mated to that torque flight transmission, is only one of 1,614 examples. If you're wondering, well, how many of, of these AAR Cooters did they make? They made 2,724. It has 355 gears out back with that nine inch rear, that Curry nine inch rear. You have heavy duty shocks, thicker front and rear sway bars. That's part of the AAR CUDA package. Zero to 60, 5.8 seconds, quarter mile and 14.4 and a top speed of 137 miles an hour. This engine, I brought my lunch with me. I actually didn't need a table, I ate my lunch off the engine. That's how clean it is. You could see the beautiful work down there with those long tube headers. I'm sure Tom was able to show you those long tube headers and that massive air cleaner that's hiding those three two barrel carburetors. And if you're wondering, well, I'm not really a car guy. What were you talking about? Edelbrock intake. This is your intake right here. So your carburetors are going to bolt to the top of the intake. And that was a special piece that was made for this particular vehicle. This really is the true essence of that old saying, Mopar or no car. And remember, Mopar stands for motor parts, and they shortened it up. But while we go ahead, we checked out the engine. Let's fire it up and let that V8 rumble. All right, guys, we're inside the 1970 AAR CUDA. This really is a time capsule, and this giveaway is so very special, especially with the show and tow, the two vehicles together. I really feel like I'm in a time machine. Get ready, let's see what it was like during the muscle car days, the real muscle car days. Door panel, simplistic, that's all you need no cup holders, no pockets. You're gonna to have to hold on to your own Twinkies. I do like the CUDA badge at the front. And if you're on the younger side of the Radies Rise family, you're probably wondering, well, what's that handle sticking out? That is to hand crank your window either up or down. This does not have power windows. The dash, very, very far forward. 
the Barracuda name, lots of room in here. I mean, these are definitely full-size cars. You have a nice glove box, all the original literature, owner's manual, all that good stuff is right in there. You're wondering, well, what does this do? You pull this down, you got your ashtray. If you're hopefully not smoking, you put a Twinkie in there. Nice little Twinkie, one Twinkie. You do have a 12 volt, which is great. Close it up. These, you open up our vents to bring in outside air into the interior, uh, which is really, really cool um, to have that, no pun intended. You have a nice aftermarket tachometer here. And then if you notice, everything is driver focused. So the way this center console comes up like this, it's not for the passenger. Everything is for me. You have a nice uh, compartment here. This is where you could store your Twinkies. So you could probably lay down about four Twinkies in there, close it up, and then the seats, nicely restored. Love the beautiful color, all the textures. And then guess what? You only have lap belts, no shoulder belts in this 1970 AAR Cuda. Plenty of headroom and the seats are really, really comfy to be honest with you. No bolstering whatsoever. What an amazing time it must have been to road race something like this uh, or to take it down your, fat, your favorite twisty road. But why don't you come over behind the business end? I want to show you behind this large teak steering wheel. Come on over. All right, guys, we're on the business end. I know you're probably wondering, well, Joe, back in 1970, how much was this AAR Cuda? It was about 3,900 bucks, if you could believe that. But you could see very minimalistic, nice, large teak wood steering wheel great color to it super thin no bluetooth none of that junk you have your uh turn single stock here and then there's a button down below i want to show you by my left foot here that's to turn on your high beam so you actually would step on it press down click it once high beams on click it again high beams off something that you just don't see on cars anymore you have all your switch gear for your uh, wipers your headlamps, and then the gauge instrumentation is very simplistic. You have your tachometer, you have your fuel gauge, temp gauge, your alt alternator gauge, and they added a nice oil pressure gauge, an auxiliary oil pressure gauge, because that's an important readout. You want to have oil pressure, make sure that 340 six pack is purring like a kitty cat, but I don't know about you. I'm ready. I hope you're ready. Let's take this AAR Cuda for a spin. All right, guys, we're in the 1970 AAR Cuda. This is a magical experience for me. I've actually never been in any Cuda, period. So really great to not only be in my first Cuda, but also in an AAR, all American racing. This is what it's about. I mean, it, it starts with that muscle, the original muscle car era, and now we have all those great Mopar products from the Dodge Demon to the Hellcats, the Red Eye. This is what it's all about. But a very unique driving experience having manual steering. There's no hydraulic assist on the steering. Looking out over that high rise power bulge hood with the ram air intake. I mean, it's just a really sweet, sweet car. And a V8 sound like no other. I think one of the things that right away reminds me of when I was younger is when you step on the throttle, actually having a throttle cable to open up the carburetor. That to me is really what makes this so special. The car just idles great. The throttle bodies, those three deuces. So you have three two barrel carburetors. Amazing. All right, guys, pull away from the light. On throttle, here we go. Smoke them if you got them. Great sound. I think the only thing that would make this a more invigorating experience, because it already is at a very high level, would be a nice manual transmission. But still, beggars can't be choosers, and I'm not complaining, trust me, because this really is a dream to get behind the wheel of this car. Unbelievable. Cool feeling, muscle car, and an AAR Cuda original. Here we go, on throttle.
for all these years and I really think that the suspension work for sure is what really is going to allow it to just drive really nice. But it's an experience. Every time you get behind the wheel of one of these, not just about outright performance, but also just the experience. What a wonderful feeling. The gauges are easy to see, easy to understand. We got the windows open and nice breeze coming in. Super smooth though. I'm, I'm really digging this AAR Kudo. I can just imagine what it must have been like for people like Dan Gurney to take this out at two Watkins Glen or Riverside, which that race doesn't even, that track doesn't even exist anymore in California. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get on some of this muscle car power. On throttle, here we go. Yeah. Love it. Woo. Just a, a totally different experience. It's all about the experience. And this is what I try to find in current cars is that unique driving experience. But this thing, it really is, like they used to say cherry. This thing is really cherry. Let me test the horn out. Nice, good old fashioned muscle car horn. But really, it's actually really easy to drive and enjoy. I would love to take this to a car show right about now. There we go, back on throttle. guys it's been another amazing day here at the dream giveaway garage i definitely got to thank Lori, boomer and blake and the rest of the crew here getting us access to this latest giveaway the show and tow it makes sense having two mopar products having a piece of not only muscle car history not only scca trans am history but also that very iconic racer dan gurney you get that all wrapped up in a very rare, unique muscle car package. But if it's cars like these that you want to see on Rady's Rides, these classic, original muscle cars, leave a comment in the comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit the subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Rady's Rides family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you on the channel, click the link in the description, get yourself some Rady's Rides merch. Got to give it up to Big Guns, Muscle Guns, McGee, we also call him Tripod now, so new nickname for him. Thank you, Tom, for your hard work. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.